Malaysia truly Asia. Oh that, my that, god, that it's that stuck in my head. Right, it's like forever, right? Yeah, what is that? What is that? Uh? But it's, it's like the jingle. In my head. It's Basically, the airline, a tourism right? like yes. jingle or something. I remember watching it on TV, I think. It just goes like Malaysia TV? truly Asia. <laughs> Are Malaysians going overboard with the Michelle Yeoh celebrations? Mm. This is your daily catch up. Michelle! Yo! <laughs> it's Love an it. Oscar winning actress! And she's the first Asian actress. First Malaysian win. actress. <laughs> Wait, then why are we talking about this? To win, <laughs> to win best actress. Well deserved. Woo! Well deserved. We're claiming her. Who? Malaysians. Oh, slay. Even though she built her career in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you only claim how much he's famous? Yes. Ooh. It's like how we claim Joseph Schooling after he won the. Ooh. Ooh. So the Oscars has recently happened, and one of the biggest news is everything, everywhere, all at once, sweeping quite a few awards, Ooh. and one of them being Michelle Yeoh's Best Actress Award. Deserved. And as Dan has explained, uh, Malaysia is now hyping this, Mississippi. except for one man. <laughs> one party. Ke Huang, ah, the guy who didn't know how to spell <laughs> pronounce. Ke Hui Chuan. Uh, is it is him? No. Oh, that's who's the one the man? One man from Malaysia. Show it. <laughs> According to Yahoo News, he's a small time Malaysia preacher. What small time? He's also part of the opposition and MP. Oh. oh. I think, I think, I think. So his name is P.U. Syed and... P.U. <laughs> Isn't it? Hey, don't make fun of religious leaders. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But so, he's a small time. <laughs> oh, okay then. <laughs> then that's fine. Go ahead. So, uh... He claims that her win only brings pride to the faithless because it doesn't bring any benefits to religious affairs. Ah, uh, make so, it about you. <laughs> <laughs> How about she didn't win it for religious affairs? Huh? To, she- to quote him, he says, what is there to be proud of about the Oscars? So it's the Oscars in general. Bring pride to Malaysia. What is there to be proud of? We cannot be proud of something that doesn't benefit religious affairs. Leave that to the faithless. You could say the same about the Olympics though. <laughs> But it depends at the Olympics, like at the award ceremony. Like how does he... Right, how does he right, 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 right. It's that's like how true, physical 100, the last guy. Then we, we can be proud of him, I guess. Mm. But so he is also the same pastor that previously threatened to organize a protest against the Blackpink concert hmm? in Malaysia. Blackpink in right, your area. Blackpink! Oh. Oh, Oreo! Blackpink in Malaysia. Oh, hey! <laughs> I'm so thrown off by the black pink Oreo that's not black or pink. Oh wait, it's black. It's just not pink. Okay. Oh no, so there's actually three variants. The <laughs> one that we bought okay, was I black and enough. white. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't hear anything that doesn't confirm what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, so he even prayed for a flood <gasps> to stop the concert. Ayo. So he yeah. prayed for people's deaths? Okay, oh. to be fair, right? Uh, during the time of the concert, there were a lot of floods happening. So he prayed for another one? It could be that he was trying to pray for it and then if it happened, because it was most likely going to happen, then it could be like a prediction kind of thing, you know. So I don't he, know. So no, why does he hate Blackpink so much? People? What's wrong with Blackpink? No, I, I think because of like his religious state, right? And like his <laughs> his state of mind and what he wants to do, which is to just <laughs> religious sp- state of mind. spread religion <laughs> throughout. Um, I think to him, Blackpink doesn't aid that cause. Uh. The opportunity cost is that instead of people going for maybe religious events, they're going for Blackpink. Stop right there unless you are Blackpink going to Malaysia. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Tag a fellow what ah? Uh, bl- bling. Bling. Back to the episode. Oh shit, I spat. Then it's the people's also, problem. But people suspect also that there was like a video that went viral of like a bunch of Malaysian men like dancing to black Blackpink. Black Slay. Pink. And then Slay. I think like in general, like the society might still lean more conservative. Yes. So that was seen as like, oh shit, what's happening to men? Like Blackpink is corrupting the men. It was very n- not conservative friendly. <laughs> what? To put it <laughs> politically correct. Can we play the clip here? Then what it means here? She said, means men used to, to go, go to, to war. <laughs> <laughs> There was a comment like, so I think when it was posted on TikTok, one of the top comments was, men used to go to war. So good. So good. (laughs) But then in, in the US, then this is wrong. The narrative is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And also like, someone actually came out and said like, yeah, men used to go to war so that we could live in a society where men could now be like this. Oh, that's a nice way to put it. I think it depends which way you lean, whether you are like, 
liberal or conservative. And in Malaysia, it's very, very polarizing because of the recent elections, given that a lot of very conservative parties got almost half of the votes mean that the nation is very, very divided. It's almost like America right now where the left wing and right wing is so in massive extremes. Wow, that's the optimal for them to play games. So what if they sang and danced to Blackpink conservatively? Like no, how? actually, if you okay? are an artist and you go to like a, a destination like Malaysia, right? Then do you have to change your costumes in order to... Got some that, artists that. was that. the case. I remember growing up, right? And I think there were clips of like... I can't remember who the artist was. Maybe it was Janet Jackson or Jennifer Lopez or one of the Jennifers that were like going to come and perform, right? And then there was a massive news report about how... Uh, the concert is tomorrow and this is what she was wearing in all these other locations before she came, right? I, and I think this was like 20 years ago. And then when she had to perform, she was totally different. Like instead of just like a crop top and mm. like like panties looking kind of thing, right? yeah. it was like a full garb. Then it was just like, oh, okay, this is what it's like to perform in Malaysia. And I think yeah. for a period of time, a lot of artists ended up just going to Thailand and Singapore instead of going to Malaysia. Yeah. Like but that's okay, day, that's respectful. No, uh. back in the day also when like, I think Slipknot first came to perform in Singapore in Padang, right? Then they had to, I heard lah, I heard that they had to sign off that they cannot uh, throw like uh, feces or pee into the audience, mm. that kind of thing. So or they like, used to do that. <laughs> like internationally. Why would they do that? I don't know, but they like water down their performance, I guess. Which seems fair account. also la. Yeah, but at least we get to see them live lah. I, I saw Beyonce <laughs> doing that. Like, cause she and Throwing the- shit and no! into the crowd. <laughs> she and her daughter were at a concert. They, they were singing, but at a more conservative country, like maybe like Dubai or something. And then the, the, the daughter started talking a bit. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like vibing. Yeah. Then she just very gracefully did this. Because <laughs> 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 she didn't want to like, like yeah. alert people, so she she they also respect she right, also respected right, right. the place lah. So what was very surprising to me is that I went for Usher concert in Malaysia, Usher, and Usher, 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 Usher is Usher. oh my god he cannot take off his shirt. The thing is is that he's usually very like sensual in his music right. Mm, it's yeah. love making music, and it one like and and also in attendance right. I was I think at that point of time the Sultan's daughter. Because it was a big like, and welcoming the daughter of the Sultan over, and then she really come down and then like- They oh, ushered her in. Yeah! <laughs> nice yeah. one. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys. So basically, like there was a portion of the song, right, where he was dry humping the, the mic and the stand, you know, and it was <laughs> very God. sensual. And then all of us were just like, is he going to get into trouble? Because this looks uh. Weird. Yeah. Illegal. Like normal if it was not in Malaysia, but like this looks super weird. <laughs> but everyone just seemed like they were having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but so nothing happened nothing to him. Nothing happened. Uh, He's Usher, what are you talking about? Usher, Usher, Usher. Sorry, but bringing it back to Malaysia. Hey, yes. Um, One of the things that I really feel should be awarded in in, in, in any way possible, right? Oh, nothing right? Is, yeah. No. Malaysia, truly Asian. Oh that, my that, god, it's that stuck that in my thing, head. Right, it's like forever, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Uh? But it's, it's like the jingle. In my head. It's Basically, the airline, a tourism, right? like yes. jingle or some shit. I remember, I remember watching it on TV, I think. It just goes like Malaysia, yeah. truly Asian. Basically, right, it is the Malaysian tourism ad that was shown all over the world, right? And it will start off with the city. Then after you get to the jungle, and then you have a person in like a costume with a spear, and then like all these different things, and then you get like the celebrities also, right? And then you'll just end off with Malaysia, truly Asia. And it's just like it's it's so like everywhere I go and I just say I'm from Malaysia, right? Even in Australia, they'll go, oh, Malaysia truly Asia. And I was like, yeah. Oh, it's so wow. whoever that wrote that, right? Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. successful. I think the, <laughs> the most like impressive ad as of late for Singapore side, right, is the half screen, the army one. Mm. <gasps> then they match everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. The copy Nike one. Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly but that. It was good. I always execution see a, though, execution impressive. No, yes. I always see an army ad in cinema and then I'm so excited to like join the army. After that. Like I really want to cry when I see the ad. Wow. Like, it has, like I feel like wow, I want to fight for Singapore after I see that. <laughs> but obviously the ad not that good lah. Because here you, you are. <laughs> I got try before. The ad is called a boys to men. Uh. For police. Oh. Huh. I was Sorry, stuck time. in the Zoom call for too long. Then I had to go to my real job. Then I like, just left. <laughs> oh, Zoom call I was quite invited recent. to a tea time online session. Like that's oh. the first stage of interview. Then I was like waiting in the tea room yeah. and then like no one answered my call for 30 minutes so I just off and then went back to real work oh my god no but wait Zoom call so this was quite recent like during the COVID period yeah so in, in Malaysia right now right I mean I could have, I guess as a Malaysian but I don't live there anymore but I from what I've been reading in the forums and the interwebs right Malaysians are very proud but they're also very torn 
because there is now a growing movement in Malaysia before Michelle Yeoh's win, right? Of like, we need to keep Malaysians in Malaysia. There's a massive brain drain. Every, every, Malaysians are all trying to leave the country and then only they become successful. Yeah. So like, everyone's a bit conflicted because do I be proud of Michelle Yeoh because she had to grow her career in Hong Kong and then she became successful? Or do I say, no, actually, let's not celebrate this because she left, you know? And so there's, there's a lot of debate about that. But in Malaysia, I don't know, for me at least, I'm just proud because she's a Malaysian that managed to, to do big. We have a few claim to frames, right? We got Michelle Yeoh, that's one. Uh, Henry Golding, but uh, it's Who's okay. Who's the badminton la. one? Lee Chong Wei. But Lee Chong Wei is very much still within the, the realms right, of like right, right. mm. The one person that people don't realize is Malaysian, right? Is Jimmy Chu. He's oh, a Penang yeah, yeah. boy and everybody loves his <laughs> shoes. So anyway, yeah, we're very proud of uh, these few people. There's also <laughs> other like mentions and shout outs. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, so, so that's the debate about Michelle Yeoh, right? right. And, and it was very ironic because Anwar Ibrahim, who's the Prime Minister right now, he has been going on about this campaign, like, you know, keep Malaysians in Malaysia. Let's all like work together to build this country together. Stop leaving the country. And then he has to put out a congratulatory message mm. to Michelle Yeoh. Mm. And then everyone's saying like, there's no win or lose in this situation. Because if you don't say, it ironic. looks like he's either being bitter or like, mm. how come you don't congratulate a Malaysian for mm. winning such a top prize? Yeah. Mm. But then if he says something, then it's ironic. So he did say something and people called him up for it. Shacks, yeah. Like, like, so, like, I feel like, as much as I understand the the, the thinking behind all this and, and there's so much history to you, so don't overthink lah. Like yeah. people being just, hey, congratulations lah, right? Yeah. Happy for her. Yeah. Like, oh. As long as you share a certain connection and you feel like, you know, you should you should celebrate that person a little bit for the end, let them have their moment, then okay lah. Yeah. And yeah. As, as someone who like, honestly, I don't know why, but like I watch the Oscars as, as maybe not every year, but I try to watch the Oscars every year because it's just something that I love, right? Mm. And for the first time to hear a winner say, the word Malaysia, because she said, you know, my mom and my family is watching back home in Malaysia in KL. Aww. And I was just like, what the f***? That's mm. crazy. Like, all these famous people are hearing Malaysia as yeah. a word even. Just sounded so crazy. Malaysia. So, the, the, the thing that I don't really like about all of this, right? I mean, as much as it's great that there is recognition happening, it feels a lot like it's frustrating that Asians are trying to fight for Western recognition and only when re Western recognition is gained then it's consider considered like something amazing mm. because like I think the first time and one of the most impressive times I've ever seen Michelle Yeoh right, is actually in Crouching Tiger oh yes yeah and Crouching Tiger is like like it paved the way for so much of, of like the, the great films that will come later on right like the what was the director's name Ang Lee right Ang Lee yeah. is he also from where is he he's from he's from Taiwan his string work and all that yeah, it's like you don't know how they do it right? yeah. and, and like that, I think, if I'm not wrong, also it inspired The Matrix, right? Like how they did some of the stunts for mm. The Matrix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Western adaptations taking and copying ideas from the from the East has yeah. is a long-standing thing yeah. in film also. Like Gang mm. Fu. Yeah. Or like even like Old Boy and the way they shot certain scenes. Mm. Then you see them copied and, and placed into movies like 300 and all this, right? Like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Like, but I think it also depends like what industry. Because I guess like because of Hollywood, like people kind of expect that because the movie industry is the biggest in America, mm. that, that's why they kind of want to be recognized in America for being in movies. Right. Because like even, even the Bollywood, like Bollywood is a massive like industry in India, mm. right? And they produce like way more, like 100 times more movies a year than like Hollywood does. And because I think uh, there was the first, there were a couple of nominees from India this year in Oscars and I think mm. RR, RR won for something. It's an Indian film. And they were just so happy, elated that they finally won an Oscar. And it's so amazing because to me, it's like, your industry is actually way bigger mm, mm. And, and you're also happy for winning an Oscar. Do you, yeah, I was and and I also so. think that it's a bit weird that given that a lot of these Academy Awards and Oscars and other, right, in the film industry, if you look back in history, it's actually a tool that is used to control the industry and manipulate it in some sense. Mm. And many of the awards and other kind of thing were like, um, there were things going on behind the scenes to control it in terms of maybe politics and whatnot. Um, hence, you see when the first female wins something or the first black person wins something or somebody of colour or of any other ethnicity, right? That's because it's always been manipulated and controlled. And not that it's... Not that everything everywhere all at once was, was bad or doesn't deserve any of these awards, right? But I do think that there is a certain momentum that the Oscars is trying to build in order to get increased viewership because their, their viewership for the award shows has been dropping year after year and this feels like it's just them taking advantage of this right 
to make as much noise as possible to make everybody talk about it so that there's people watch and people continue to care and the Oscar stays relevant. Yeah. I feel like it's like people became more woke. So then they started realizing that like winning an Oscar is a lot more campaigning yeah. than like audience votes or whatever, you know? And then recently, like you mentioned, like the scan the recent years they got the hashtag Oscar so white, you know, all those like that people were woke enough to call out and then therefore start like boycotting the show. Mm. So I can kind of see that trajectory. Then I think like Alison was also talking about um the the whale actor, uh, is it? Brandon, Brandon Fraser. Fraser. Yeah. yeah. Comeback in, story. Do you see the TikToks of him? He looks so like uncomfortable <laughs> at the Oscars because it's yeah. his first time really like returning to such a large event because previous the in the previous years he took like a long break because of some like I think he's trying to heal mentally because he was apparently sexually assaulted yeah. allegedly by one of the top Hollywood producers and then after he made that claim right he was like taken a taken out of a lot of events and like yeah, he claims movies, that he was blacklisted yeah. losing roles and all of that so he took a long break and then he was one of the top like actors actually in the industry and then for him to suddenly take a break everybody was like Shock very that. shocked la. and yeah. then when he came back they were all so excited so seeing him at such a large event right he actually looked very uncomfortable a bit like he didn't deserve to be here but then but yeah. then right the everything all at once actors were always like pulling him to take photos with him because he was alone what, for oh, the yeah, role. So nice. and, and they were so close because like the the Ki Hui like Chen yeah. guy um, oh God, they, they both him. acted in a same movie in the 80s at Chino Man in Chino Man. In, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that one. So Which is supposedly like a cult classic. Yeah, in so American see them culture. reunite is like, they look at each other and say, we made it. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Which yeah. is also why like, Ke so, Hui Chen's Oscar speech though, if you have seen it. Yeah, so cute. Oh, oh, like what was the speech? Uh, it was about dreams. Cause yeah. like he had, he picked very early, he fell, and after he fell for a very long time, mm-hmm. then until suddenly everything everywhere, like the director or what, like gave him a chance then, or like went to find him specifically, if I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. And then after that, he exploded and it led to him winning an Oscar even. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Cause like he quit acting for like 20 years or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah. But I think like the, the problem, right, lies in like the voting of it. So like Golden Globes is, is voted by the Hollywood foreign press. And so it's like journalists that are outside of America that votes for who the, the winners mm-hmm. are. Whereas in the Oscars, right, it's them complicated. Basically, you are part of the academy if you've ever won or been nominated. And so it's always a, a growing group of people. And then how you vote is that out of all the nominees, right, you have to write pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four, pick five. Mm-hmm. So then if everybody's pick two is actually the same, but mm-hmm. people's pick one is actually different, right? Sometimes actually your second pick might end up winning. Oh. It's like the Ballon d'Or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, ish, ish, ish. And so then what happens is that obviously not everybody in the entire academy right which is all these actors and actresses and like crew yeah. and whatever will have the chance to watch every single movie and so mm. what they end up doing is that they vote for what has the best storyline or the narrative outside of the movie which mm. is like the comeback story la, or like the first African American to win it la, or like all these different things actually outside of the movie industry that plays a part in, in who wins so it's not exactly very accurate la, it's, it's definitely not the best it's not always going to be the best performance of that year there was oh. a bit of controversy or the, who was the girl that won then people oh the supporting Jamie, actress Jamie Lee Curtis and a lot of people saying that actually um, the Wakanda Forever uh, woman deserved it more oh I thought the it was mom, the other the mom. everything everything I was actor the, the, the one who played the da- daughter oh the but, Chupaki mm, Chupaki mm, girl. yeah but to be fair if uh, she wasn't even nominated though right was she I can't remember. But I think she didn't have a strong narrative as well if you talk about campaigning and things like that. Mm. But fun fact, in the movie, right, during one of the multiverse, right, she did hold an Oscar. So in another universe. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) I think either way, the film was a very big win for everyone. Oh yeah, all at once. Yeah, for the two filmmakers, like this is crazy. And I think it was very inspirational for the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. Especially since we've, we've moved so far to where a lot of people with a smaller budget can create crazy things, yeah. right? And for them to have climbed this giant mountain and achieve so much, right? It's very, very inspirational. Yeah. yeah. I think it was it was five editors who learned everything they knew from YouTube. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> use, is, they use Premiere yeah. Pro. Yeah. Like the thing that we use to edit TDK no. <laughs> to edit yeah, that that's movie. Why that, what, like, I saw like an editor also, he made a video saying that like, he was very... I, if I'm not wrong, they also won best editing. Yes, they so did. So then like to see that representation or so like he edit from home yeah. Yeah. on his computer yeah. and then his timeline looks like shit yeah so his timeline looks like this yeah. <laughs> it was like a mess la. Yeah. but then like to yeah. him he said that's just how he envisioned it la. like he don't he don't feel the need to clean it up or what then, yeah. Yeah. so seeing that also was like 
a, a moment of achievement for all or affirmation for the yeah, editor. Yeah. yeah. And and I think when, as I was watching the film also, like something that really struck out to me was their ability to work within a budget but be creative with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and use find ways to blend it into the concept. You know? Mm-hmm. Wow. Damn shook. The, yeah. the story was so good. I cried like three times. Yeah, I remember crying like in the first 10 minutes. Huh, I but I didn't cry. Why? I really didn't like how long the third act dragged. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's my only critic of the film. Mm. Oh my goodness. You know what's so frustrating? Like, so I saw the interview that uh this interviewer had with like Hugh Grant. Who? And Hugh Grant. Love Actually, yeah. Nothing oh, okay, Hill. Okay, 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 okay. Huge Grant, huge Grant. One of my yeah. favorite <laughs> actors of all time. British actor. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was my impression of Hugh Grant, thank you. Uh, oh, Music and Lyrics, one of my favorite movies of all time. There is also this, so there was this interview and then everyone is all like calling Hugh Grant out for being rude. Why? But if you watch the interview, right, I'm so sorry, but the interviewer was just so not competent for her job. Like, she was asking just the like the worst questions to Hugh Grant, who obviously is like just there to pick up his like swag bag. Like he had no movies out that were nominated. He just he clearly looks like he's quite bored. And then you go up to him and be like, "Hey, Hugh Grant, you're a veteran actor. Like, what are you looking forward to most in this?" And he's just like not matching the energy, right? Mm. So he just said, "Oh, you know, um, just looking forward to seeing all these amazing nominees, whatever." Um, but you know, to me, like the Oscars is a little bit of a vanity fair like he was playing the the wordplay that it's it's a vanity fair right mm. and then she completely didn't understand so she went oh yeah you're looking forward to the vanity fair after party oh my god yeah it's like so cool then he's he just like ah, this interview is not gonna go well already so like obviously he just looked like so uninterested you know why or not why it's because like for a lot of them right nowadays uh, they get influencers or big youtubers to just to come interview. down and conduct the interviews and yeah. then share that whole vlog or whatever right, with their own audiences yeah. to promote the, the event. So they're not really like journalists. Yeah. That's generally what Vogue is doing. I'm just reading this New York Post headline which says Hugh Grant did nothing wrong in Ashley Graham's Oscars interview. She did. Yeah! I agree. So sad lah. I agree. Yeah. But of, like probably props to him lah. And, and, I, and, I, and I believe there are many people who when they have to handle interviews right like when they can do it professionally even when the other party isn't right like what well, that's the that yeah, actually yeah. makes them look I think yeah. Christian Bale is damn good at that. Because like there's so many times where like Christian Bale reacts to stupid questions being asked <laughs> to him and then he really answers them. You can tell right that he takes one second to go and then turns on the, the charm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like it's really not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But then the opposite, right, is Killian Murphy, right? Where there's a compilation of Killian Murphy looking completely uninterested. <laughs> and then someone actually showed him that compilation and he just went like, you know what? I'm not gonna apologize for this. This like whole junker is just damn long yeah, and like yeah. draining. You know Chris Brown, right? Controversial figure, but anyway, he's going on tour now, right? And he has a portion in his tour where he essentially brings up a fan for like a lap dance. So <laughs> this boyfriend bought the girlfriend, as in like paid for both their tickets, like they go to the concert together, and then the girlfriend happened to be the one that got brought up on stage. Oh oh. And then after that, like, but the dance is really quite extreme, one. Like, like central. Like, like, magic, like magic mic. Oh. Then like okay. Branding. Okay, but no one take out clothes, like No one take out clothes. Oh. But then it's okay, but movement. Can, and then, can demo? I so then after that, she like he his caption was like, oh, imagine bringing like paying for your girlfriend's ticket to a Chris Brown concert and then having to witness this. And then after that, people like say, wow, you should break up with her like she's for the streets because like she also like she's for the streets. She also touched him and all that. But it's it's like a celebrity. Oh my though. god, I would like if, if Elvin has to go out and like grind with J Lo or something, right? Go ahead. No, but. <laughs> You see, right? If he just stand there and <laughs> let her do what she do as a performance, okay. Mm. But if he <laughs> if get he... into it, uh, then then okay, so okay lah, cannot lah. But if she's the one, you know, uh, no, but you know what I just described or not? She also get into it. Like his leg, his leg like that, ma. Then after that, she also like touch his. She clam. Oh, okay. No, I thought no. she okay, no, she's, she, <laughs> she's sitting. Then yeah. he's standing on top. Um, oh. I think okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what if? Cause this is and this is a is a known thing, right? So, um, at this particular artist's like concert, right? He likes to invite women up also, and his songs are quite sexy, like mm. romantic kind of like uh-huh. love love songs, and mm. then he will end up grinding them, and he likes to wear white pants, and you and there have been a lot of footage of him, right? Where you can see his schlong, his schlong. yeah, yeah. So this was like Robin Thicke and like Miley Cyrus. Thick. It's oh, yeah, like she's... Pitbull and J Lo. Oh yeah! Oh. oh my god, that one really can see his bulge there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so it was if, so why were you prominent. Looking? You zoom in. It's like really got curve. It's not like just like it was really giving pit. 
And there's, the, and there's another artist yeah, that pulls people up and then make out with them. Also, right? huh? what? Make huh? out? Yeah, there's like one of the, 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 the rock band one. Oh, then he pull people and Matthew make Healy, out with yeah. I think so, I no, think so. He, no, in the video he said, are you comfortable? Are you of age? Do you want this? Then she like, yes. Then he kissed. <laughs> He asked for consent and he asked about the age. But first. what a product to offer. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's just kissing one. Yeah. It's like a lucky draw, yeah. We just buy a ticket. No, and he also kisses men. So it's not. Yeah. Just, it's but not they, oh, really? He, but he mm. asked first. He asked first. That's <laughs> the difference. Hey, so, so You're you, really not helping yeah, your own yeah, case. I'll make, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure of that. Um, no, so if, say, your boyfriend gets pulled up mm. or you get pulled up mm. and then, right, that proceeds to happen where the fella is really like grinding you and people can see his schlong rubbing on your ass and uh, something uh. like ah uh. you are also for the streets <laughs> why? why cannot why oh, it's a, a lifetime pass. opportunity eh. <laughs> <laughs> I would so I feel like if it's a one way thing still okay but if you get into it also right then it's like a bit sus lah but it's a once a lifetime opportunity just grab it yeah, huh? I I think I'm I think I'm a bit with, I'm a bit with Shams actually on this. Like no. I think if you are a massive fan of of a musician mm. and like I know like Net so like I knew that Net was a massive Arctic Monkeys fan, right? And then to just see her like just start crying and bawling because she's suddenly watching them live, right? If he really just like pull her and then like just make out her. Okay la, make out draw a line la, but like <laughs> Grind her, but you can Grind see her. his if, if, it, like, if she suddenly just, if she suddenly just went like, oh my god, you're you're real or whatever, I would be like, I'm so happy. No, for he you. grind her and then she's gyrating back also. <laughs> gyrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gyration. No. I no, will. Gyration is happening. No, I will find a way to be happy for her in that moment because I know how happy she Same. will be. What if he grab her boobs? I was slap. Oh la, no, ah. I think she yeah, will slap him before I do lah. Same as her touching Chris Brown ass. What? No, but it is of of course must have like consent lah. No, you okay. said grab it. You said grab it. Grab the opportunity. You miss. You misunderstood. Oh. <laughs> wow, yeah, good save. Wow. No, she meant it for the guy dog. <laughs> How you managed to save? Well played, well played. Yeah. <laughs> no, so they broke up. Oh. oh. She broke up. With, he broke up with her. Wait, who? The story that I was telling. Just oh, what was the story? The girl that uh, uh, Chris, Chris Brown grinded. Oh, okay. Oh, this is real, ah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I just That's made a story about Chris Brown. There were so many Brown. hypotheticals, yeah. Why were we talking about Chris Brown? Oh, uh, Usher. Wait, wait. Usher, Usher because what Blackpink? Concerts, yeah. Conservative. <laughs> yeah, so back to the Oscars. We made it, guys. Anyway, yeah. I also have two honorable mentions from the red carpet. Oh. So one is Cara Delevingne. Ooh. She also has like a semi uh, comeback because like she's a model. <laughs> So she has a semi. Cara Delevingne. Come back, sorry. So nice. she's a model, right? Mm. Then after that, um, in the past year or so, she's been going through like quite a rough patch. Like people right. allege that she's like on drugs outdoors and then she's doing some like crazy stuff. Like, then like at certain award shows, they also have like videos of her like being like, oh, I, if I'm not wrong, it was like with Lizzie or something. Okay. Then like Odi. being being very weird. Oh, she's right. the long eyebrow yes, one. Yes, yes, okay, yes, okay, yes, okay, okay, yes. okay. So popular. then, I think she she turned up at this Oscars or so. And then after that, like, they there was this clip of her that went viral, right? Where, like, she stand at the red carpet, right? And then, like, in that, like, 20 seconds, right? She gave, like, a hundred different looks. Like, just by, like, changing, like, the size of her eye. Then she, like, tilt her head up, down, and her mouth open, close a bit. Then, right, right, right. wow, like, her model, like, really come back, yeah? So then, like, she, like... <laughs> hey, wow, you also can do that, Hey, wow. Uh, thank you. So let me see, just, the photographer just... Hold the button. Yeah. <laughs> it is all the It's photos. just shots. Wow. It's like those um the Taobao like the. Yeah, they didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in re in real time, it looks ridiculous, lah. No, oh, I have to show you the video later. Thank you everybody for attending this year's Academy Awards. See you in the next episode. Bye bye. Turn on your notification bells, please. Ding dong, ding dong. Bounce. What's the Oscar soundtrack? That is no iconic one. Not iconic. Oh. Not memorable one.